Well, don't you little orphans. Father, we may not have the building, but we have the love of God in our hearts. The smoldering steeple is a reminder of what happened at the Dry Branch Free Will Baptist Church last night. Not much could be saved, just a few Bibles and the church bell. But the congregation says it will survive, despite the pain. This is a great big hurt. My heart's broken, my heart's heavy, but the Lord knows all about this. I feel good about it, the Lord will make a way for us. This is the church where 77-year-old Amy Plemons went to school and was baptized in 1924. It means a lot. It's is it your life? Oh, my, my, my home. While the service filled the valley, firefighters sat close by, keeping an eye on the hot spots and speculating how this fire started. Some think Saturday afternoon's lightning struck the building, igniting the inside wiring. But it was nearly six hours before there was any evidence there was a fire. That's the question. Could it have smoldered that long? And I just want to get somebody with a better viewpoint other than mine. After this morning service, the SBI started an investigation to determine if the fire was intentionally set. But for now, Reverend Revis doesn't believe it was arson. You think it was lightning? I'm for sure it was. The congregation does not have insurance on the church, but members say that won't stop them from rebuilding it someday. But they say their family circle will not be broken, that they will meet in individual homes until they decide how to rebuild. It's just a building here today, but it'll be a church tomorrow. Thank the Lord. Joey Pop, News 13, Madison County. How you doing this morning? Good, you going to work? <laughs> okay, very good. Ron, let's pan over, go over to 240. As you can tell, some of the traffic is moving. It's moving quite slowly. Here comes some headlights now. Uh, the Highway Patrol does warn that if uh, more traffic does come on, that the roads can get treacherous, like we said. City buses are running, cabs are running, so if you need to get into work in downtown, consider the alternatives. Karen, back to you. Thanks a lot, Joey. Around the area, hoping that the fire will now burn itself out. It's the worst forest fire in Western North Carolina this year. More than 100 National Forest Service firefighters from Florida, Louisiana, Arkansas, Alabama, and North Carolina are on the scene tonight to protect the Pisgah National Forest from burning anymore. What's left is scorched forest. It started yesterday afternoon and quickly claimed 200 acres before fire lines could be laid. Even a portion of the Appalachian Trail is used so the fire won't spread. Today, a helicopter dumped large buckets of water onto hot spots, while an air tanker dropped hundreds of gallons of retardant. Above the containment area, firefighters hope the retardant will keep fresh timber from burning should high winds blow the fire over the line. We're trying to mop anything up that would, uh, you know, ignite these little leaves and stuff that didn't burn last night, and then all the light stuff, sparks could blow across the line. Pull that out and then scatter it, and then the pieces that are cold or black, throw them on, them on down the hill. While ground crews turn the hot soil and saw up burnt trees, more water was dumped onto the hot spots. It's the best defense until the fire burns itself completely out. There's still going to be fire in there for days and if we don't get any rain. This afternoon, winds died as clouds moved in, and soon light rain began to fall. It's the best sign for these firefighters in the last couple of days. Now the skies have cleared and the wind has picked up. That's bad news. Only scattered showers are now predicted. We have learned this afternoon that there is another fire just west of here in Tennessee. Some of the crews that are mopping up here may be sent over there. By the way, Darcel, forest rangers speculate that a passing motorist on Highway 25 might have started this fire. Whether it's intentional or accidental is still under investigation. Back to you. Joey, will firefighters stay on the scene all night tonight? Yes, they will stay here and they will continue to mop. They want to make sure that all those hot spots are out, especially now that the wind has picked up. We'll have the latest at 11. Thank you, Joey. Jesse and Sue Burke are feeling the pain of losing a beloved pet. All they have now are memories of Honey. She meant all the world to me. And I was sorry to see her go down the way she did. If these men had any guts, they would have shot her. But Honey and at least three other dogs were apparently poisoned to death last Thursday and Friday, all in the same area and far northern Buncombe County. Burke says three more dogs are missing in the neighborhood and believed dead. That makes a total of seven gone. Farmers around here put down poison because their cattle were being chased by dogs, and they didn't get the dogs that were doing it. And they got other dogs who were good dogs. But one of the farmers who's being accused says Honey and other dogs ruined his tobacco beds and cattle. 
Right there comes calf its tail to off and the dogs tore its tail off. Colin Bishop says he warned the neighbors the dogs were running in wild packs, but he didn't poison them. I was called by the one of the owners and asked if I poisoned him. And I told him no, that I didn't poison his dog. Do you know what happened to them? No, sir, I don't. But I did tell him when I went and told him that if I caught that dog back on my property and my cattle, I'd kill it and he could come and get it. County law prohibits dogs running unattended off the owner's property. That's why other neighbors are keeping a close watch on their pets. But state law prohibits poisoning of animals, and it carries a maximum two-year sentence. The Sheriff's Department will continue questioning area farmers and residents. So far, no arrests have been made. Joey Pomp, News 13, Buncombe County. Meet Bonnie Bumgarner of Silva. She's cooking up her very own original fish dish, hoping to be crowned the best trout cook in America. Sometimes it can be a disaster. <laughs> Bonnie's already beat out a thousand other entrants nationwide. Now she, along with a woman from California and one from Kansas, are cooking it up in Asheville, all part of the U.S. Trout Farmers National Convention. Couldn't boil an egg when I got married. I don't believe that. My husband taught me to cook. Believe it or not, this is only the second time she's made her prized winning entry. You didn't know you had a winning entry until after it had been picked. After it had been picked, and then I cooked it. The moment of truth has arrived. Time for the judges to sample Bonnie's Rainbow Trout Spectacular. Also time to be a little nervous as she serves famed food editor Merrill Ellis. The judges all have their own system and different, you know, the numbers don't really make all that much difference. If we are, our job is to find the winner and basically taste is the thing you're looking for most. As you can tell, the judges behind me are still judging and we're not going to find out who the winner is until Friday night. But I'm able to sample some of this and I've got to tell you folks, this is spectacular. Of course, we're not going to be prejudiced because Bonnie is the hometown girl. Joey Pop, News 13, Asheville.